tense. Talk about it? Yeah, well, there's a father and son scout camp this weekend. Was well, that a problem? It sounds great. Well, we were going to go, but now Dad has to work. Oh, well, that's a shame. But I suppose you'd want to go. Me? It doesn't have to be a father. You can take an uncle or a brother or a friend. Oh, I don't know. Will you take me, George? You said it sounded great. Yeah, me and my big mouth. You'll love it. That's what they said last time. Last time? Last time I went camping, it rained all the time, and this creek came out of nowhere and washed my tent away. Sounds awful. Yeah, the worst thing was I was still in it when it happened. Still, <laughs> I did win the canoeing prize. You should have seen me take the rapids in that tent. <laughs> well, it won't rain this time, I promise. Yeah, uh, I don't know, Peter. All right, yeah, I'll take you. You will? Yeah. That's terrific. Thanks, George. I better see if it's okay with my folks. Oh, boy, you'll never regret this. Yeah, I hope not. What are you doing, George? I thought you were going to have a sleep in the hammock. Uh, yeah, I just thought I'd check the underside for holes. Oh, um, who are you talking to just now? Peter. He wants me to take him on a scout camp this weekend. Good. Do you good to have a break? Yeah, I suppose so. You won't mind looking after the shop. No, actually, I have to be here to look after Oscar. Who's Oscar? Mrs. Morley's pet. Oh. <laughs> uh, do you know where the camping gear is? Um, in the cellar, I think. Right. Camping, eh? Swimming rivers. Trailing mountains, climbing trees, rubbing sticks together, tying knots. Oh dear, I hope the scouts are ready for him. Sleeping bag. Better try it on for size. What's that? Oh, well, it's old, ancient, oriental. Uh, yes, uh, you exercise the back without uh, 
uh, whoa, without, uh, without doing any damage to yourself by uh, rolling on the ground. <laughs> Keratoni, I'm surprised you haven't heard about it. Mind if I join you? Oh, fine, no, I don't mind. <sighs> what do I do first? Ah, first, well, first you, uh, you sort of uh, wriggle a bit like this. Wriggle? Yes. To warm up. <laughs> right. Uh, and then you, uh, uh, and then you, uh, you roll slowly and evenly about. Right. Uh, uh, was there something you wanted? Yes. Oh. I was looking for a cane chair. <laughs> well, you're in luck. <laughs> We've got two. Uh, one over there and one over there. Right. Excuse me. Oh, fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, there you are, George. Oh. Uh, comfy, are you? Uh, hello, Mr. Molly. Yeah, yeah, well, you just carry on. I just brought Oscar along. Oh, where is he? Yeah. That's Oscar? Yeah, I'm afraid so. I never cared much for plants myself. Excuse me. Yeah, of course. I quite like that one, but I should have a look at the other one, too. Right. Yes, the wife was always a keen gardener. Carries it to extremes, I guess. I mean, who ever heard of calling a plant Oscar? Oh, uh, sorry, Mr. Molly, were you saying something? Oh, no, don't you worry, George, it doesn't matter. Now, look, I've left a list of do's and don'ts over there. I don't know why she bothers, frankly. We'll pick him up on Sunday. Bye, George. Bye. I think I'll take that one. Oh, good. Uh, what would you like to swap it for? I've got just the thing. A multi-bladed penknife. Great for camping. Fine. <laughs> Look, I've only got a couple of exercises left to do. I wonder if you wouldn't mind leaving that penknife on the counter and helping yourself to the chair. I certainly. I wouldn't want to interrupt your Karatani session. I'll see you. Uh, good luck with the Karatani. Yes. Bye. I'm Oh, lovely fresh hair. Oh, 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 thank you, Aunt Mimi. You saved my life. Oh. What on earth are you trying to do? Oh, I was trying to get out of this sleeping bag. The zipper got stuck. <laughs> I don't think Lord Baden-Powell would be too impressed. Who? He started the Scouts. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? I almost suffocate and all you can do is laugh. What's that? Oh, Aunt Mimi, uh, meet Oscar. Oscar? Yeah. Well, I didn't expect a plant. Oh, pleased to meet you, Oscar. There's a list of things to do there. Oh, from Mrs. Morley. Eh? Yeah. Uh, rule one. Cover, Oscar, if there's any unpleasant thing on television. What's this television? Yes, it says here that he enjoys gardening programs mostly. Mm. Now, always say good morning to him so he doesn't feel ignored. Unbelievable. Mm. Rule three. Always introduce Oscar to visitors. Helps to make him more sociable. Almost human. Rule four. Don't say the word snail. You just did. What? You said the word... S-N-A-I-L. So I did. Sorry, Oscar. <laughs> hmm. I think I just heard Oscar cough. Don't be silly, George. Plants don't cough. Well, I don't know. Trees bark. <laughs> I don't think Oscar liked your joke much. All that plant needs is a dose of fresh air, sunshine and plenty of water. Mm, well, according to this, it's time for lunch. How about some liquid fertilizer, eh? Mmm, yum. George! George, it's all right. My folks said I could go. You still want to go, don't you? Oh, yes, of course I do, Peter. I'm looking forward to it. Besides, I don't want to stay here all weekend with a weed called Oscar. I heard that, George. You apologise. Uh, sorry, Oscar. What's going on? I'll tell you later. Let's get this gear together and practice putting up the tent in the back lane. Okay. You take that, 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 and that. Oh, I'll take that.
What's this? Uh, your fingers? <laughs> it's a queen bullion trying to burn itself. <laughs> I'm glad you decided to stay tonight, Peter. Me too. What time are you being picked up in the morning? About five o'clock. Five? Uh, Peter, George is not at his best in the morning. What do you mean? I've checked the weather report. Looks like it's going to be fine weather for you. Oh, great. I'll set up my sleeping bag now. Watch out for the zip. Huh? Oh, don't worry about it, Peter. Oh, okay. Oh, you two are going to have a wonderful weekend. Not so sure about mine, though. Why is that? It's Oscar. He's depressed. Well, all that plan needs is a good dose of fresh air. Hmm. I'll put him in the kitchen just for change. That might do the trick. No doubt about it. You wait till morning. It'll be as right as rain. Ah! Don't say R-A-I-N when we're going camping, George. Oh. Sorry, Peter. Uh, Oscar will be fine. How's that? That's better. Right. Oh, well. It's time for bed. Yeah. I'll clear up these dishes. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night, Peter. Good night. Good night, George. Good night, Aunt Minnie. Depressed, aren't you? What you need, Oscar old bean, is a night in the fresh air. Hey, Peter. Meet Oscar. He's going to keep us company tonight. Oh, hi, Oscar. Does he snort? No, he's a cactus. Oh. <laughs> Wait. What time should I set the old alarm clock for? Well, we're getting picked up at five. About 4.30, then. Yeah. Uh... Good night, Peter. Good night, George. Good night, Good night Oscar. Oscar. <laughs> In the middle of the night, a fly woke Charlie. At first, he lay listening, half asleep, while it swooped around the room. It was very, very near when the buzzing stopped. The fly had alighted on his face. He jerked his head up. The fly buzzed off. Now he was really awake. The fly dashed at him. He beat at it with his hands. At the same time, he appealed to his younger brother, Wilson, in the next bed. Wilson, Wilson there's a fly. Wilson, unstirring, slept on. Once, Charlie hit the fly, or at least hit where the fly had been a second before, on the side of his head. The blow was so hard that his head sang with it afterwards. Then suddenly, the fight was over. No more buzzing. He laid his head back on the pillow, and now, he noticed a tickling in his ear. It must be. It was the fly. He rose in panic. He shook Wilson repeatedly. Wilson, Wilson, I tell you, there's a fly in my ear. Wilson groaned and slept on. The tickling in Charlie's ear continued. Charlie stood in the middle of the bedroom floor, trying to think. He needed to see down his ear or get someone else to see down it. Wilson wouldn't do. Perhaps Margaret would. He was passing the dog basket when he had the most unnerving sensation of something wrong there. Something unusual, at least. Floss? Floss, he whispered. He held out his fingers low for Floss to lick. Floss. Don't poke your fingers in my eyes. It was Margaret. What are you doing? What are you doing? Just sitting with Floss. No one seemed to realise what it was like for her when those puppies went. She just couldn't sleep for loneliness. I've been staying with her every weekend. I'm going to the kitchen to get a drink, said Charlie. He went into the kitchen, followed by Margaret and Floss. They all had a quick drink. Then Charlie and Margaret looked into the fridge. The remains of a joint, a very large quantity of mashed potato, butter and cheese. Margaret poured some milk into a saucepan and put it on the hot plate. Then she began a search for the tin of cocoa. Charlie was already absorbed in the making of a rough cheese sandwich. The milk in the pan began to steam. It rose in the saucepan, peered over the top, and boiled over onto the hot plate, where it sizzled loudly. The fan drew the smell up and away through a pipe to the outside. It also made a loud, roaring noise. Charlie was eating his bread and cheese. Margaret was drinking her cocoa when Alison appeared. Only Floss was pleased to see her. 
Alison, had caught them red-handed. She would call Mum, that was obvious. There would be an awful row. Alison stood there. She glanced with scorn at Charlie's poor piece of bread and cheese and at Margaret's cocoa. She moved to the fridge, flung open the door and looked searchingly inside. She switched on the oven. Mum will notice if you take too much of that potato, said Margaret. But Alison thought big. If there's none left at all, and if the bowl it was in is washed and dried and stacked away with the others, then she's going to think she must have made a mistake. There just can have never been any mashed potato. Alison rolled out her mixture and cut it into cakes. Then she set the cakes on a baking tin and put it in the oven. Now she did the washing up. She washed up and put away as she went along. And now, said Alison, and now I, think I think we should fetch, fetch Wilson. Wilson. The other two were aghast at the idea, but Alison was firm in her reasons. It's better, it's better if we're all in this together, Wilson, Wilson as well. well. If the worst comes well, to the worst, well, Mum will be softer with us if we've got Wilson. Wilson will tell. He just always tells everything. He can't help it. He always tells everything. Right. We'll give him something to tell and then see if Mum believes him. Get an umbrella from the hall and Dad's sou'wester and a blanket or a rug or something. They fetched the umbrella and the hat, and lastly they fetched Wilson, still sound asleep, slung between them in his eiderdown. They propped him on a chair at the kitchen table. By now, the potato cakes were done. Alison took them out of the oven and set them on the table before Wilson. She buttered them, handing them in turn to Charlie and Margaret and helping herself. One was set aside to cool for floss. The smell of fresh cooked buttery potato cakes woke Wilson, as was to be expected. Wilson opened his mouth wide and Alison put a potato cake inside, whole. They're, They're paradise, paradise cakes, cakes Alison said. Potato, potato cakes? cakes, said Wilson, recognising the taste. No, paradise cakes, Wilson. And then stepping aside, she gave him a clear view of Charlie and Margaret. Wilson watched with wide open eyes, and into his wide open mouth, Alison put, one by one, the potato cakes that were his share. But Wilson did not stay awake for very long. When there were no more potato cakes, he yawned, drowsed, and suddenly was deeply asleep. Charlie and Margaret put him back into his eiderdown and took him to bed again. Alison, last out of the kitchen, made sure that everything was in its place. The next morning, Mum was in the kitchen first. On Sundays, she always cooked a proper breakfast for anyone there in time. But this morning, Mum was still looking for a bowl of mashed potato when Dad appeared. I can't think where it's gone, she said. I'll have the bacon and eggs without the potato, said Dad. And he did. While he ate, Mum went back to searching. Wilson came down. He said that Charlie was still asleep and there was no sound from the girls' room either. He said he thought they were tired out. He went on talking while he ate his breakfast. When Mum stopped searching for a moment, still without her potato, Wilson was saying, and Charlie sat in an umbrella boat, and Margaret pretended to be a sea serpent, and Alison gave us paradise cakes to eat. Floss had one too, but it was too hot for her. What are paradise cakes, Dad? What's a paradise cake? Don't know, said Dad, reading. Mum, what's a paradise cake? Wilson, you've been dreaming. No, really? Wilson cried, but his mother paid no further attention. I give up, she said. That mashed potato, it must have been last weekend. Oh, 5.30 in the morning, I need some more sleep. Oh, wake me up when it's time to leave, will you, Pop? Oh. Wake up, George, you've got to pack the gear. Huh? George? Oh, yes, yes, the tent. Yeah, I'll no. pack the tent. You get the sleeping bag. Oh, sleeping sleeping bag, remember? Sleeping bag. Sleeping bag. Help! 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 I can't breathe! Help! George! George, 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 Mimi, have put Oscar outside. George, oh no, it's raining. Oscar, Oscar, I'm coming. Oh. Ah! Oscar, oh, Oscar, you poor little thing. Oh, sweetheart, help a pot. Do that. 
Oh, oh. What do I do now? Uh, sticky tape, sticky tape, sticky tape. Oh, no! Oh. Stay there, Oscar. Hello? Uh, Mrs. Morley? Uh, Oscar? Oh, he's a... Uh, 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 oh, no, you don't have to come back so soon. Oh, I'm sure it's going to stop raining any day now. What? Oh, I mean, uh, this morning. Yes, yes, that's fine. That's fine. See you then. Bye-bye. A disaster. Oscar, Oscar, speak to me. Say something. Tell me you're okay. Oh, oh, oh. Hi, Mimi. Hi. The rain washed us out. I brought a couple of survivors with me. This is James and this is Stuart. Hi, boys. Oh, dear, you're soaking wet. Be in the nip up and get some towels, shall you? Sit down. Well, I won't ask how it went. Well, we won the prize for setting up the tent in the quickest time. Good, I'm glad they didn't see you practice this. Well, they didn't see us practice. George is really good at lighting fires in the rain. Oh, well. Such a pity you got rained out. Rain. Oh, no, I've just remembered. Remembered what? Oh, George, it's awful, awful. What's awful? Where'd you see I slept late and he was outside and I didn't know. Who? Hey, Bibi, how's Oscar? <sighs> See for yourselves. Oh, oh no. I don't know how I'm going to tell Mrs. Morley. She'll be so upset. Scouts, we have a friend in trouble. How can we help her? Well, we'll have to break the news to Mrs. Morley very gently. Mm, give her a cup of tea. Make her sit down. Talk to her about the most wonderful plants in the world. Yes, very good, Scouts. All good suggestions. Yes, thank you, boys. They are, but I'm still not looking forward to telling her. I will help you, Mimi. Yeah. Quick, oh, quick cover, Oscar. Oh, Mimi! Look here, Mrs. Morley. Hello. Hello. Oh, what's this, the Scouts Jamboree? Oh, no, they've just been out camping. <laughs> Yes, uh, the rain washed us out, unfortunately. Oh, you poor thing. <laughs> yeah, same with us, George. You can't play bowls in the rain, I'm afraid. Mimi, I'm dying to know. Would you like to Ta sit down, Mrs. Morley? Oh, that's very nice of you. Our pleasure. Thank you. Now, how a cup of tea, Mrs. Morley? Oh, thank you. Uh, what I would like... Aren't plants wonderful things? Well, I never found them wonderful. Oh, how would you know, dear? You never take an interest. Speaking of plants, where's... Mrs. Morley... I have something to tell you. Uh, yes. <sighs> he got caught in the rain. Oh! Well, what's that doing here? Don't you recognize him? Yes, of course I do. It's that awful thing I won in a raffle. Couldn't even give it away. But how did it get here? You mean that's not Oscar? Oscar? Good heavens, no. Oh, dear, we, we thought it was... Oh, Herbert, what is the meaning of this? Well, it looks like Oscar. It's nothing like my Oscar. He can't tell one plant from another. I asked him if his name was Oscar and he said yes. Uh, I'm afraid I'm going to dash home and see how darling Oscar is. He must be so lonely. Oh, but naturally. He... Yeah, the plant will be all right. It's been undercover. Yes, poor Oscar. No one to talk to all weekend. Is it for Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh. Yeah, no damage done at all. Oh, I think I was lucky, George. Lucky? Why? Well, what if it had been Oscar? Oh, mm. tease up, everyone. I'd like one. Me too. Me three. How about you, Irving? <laughs> <laughs> The new LP from the Swap Shop series is available at an ABC shop near you.